This is R157. This is a lecture on volumes. So I built this very simple swimming pool, if you can call it that. Uh, let me just build it. Let me just look at it real quick. Okay, so we got the outside part, and then if we go down, you see here's a ladder. Can't do anything with the ladder, so we can't get out the deep end of the pool. So let's start there. I'm going to take my builder brush and I'm going to size it so it's about the same size as the ladder. And let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And I got a little bit of smoke. Okay, so you see there's the ladder. Let's just keep on shrinking it down. Get around the same width, get around the same height, and pull it in. And there we go, we got that set up. Now, the other thing we want to do is adjust the height. This is too high at this point. You want it 40 units above the top surface so you have enough space to basically exit the ladder. The bottom isn't as much of an issue. And this is a little high, so let's go down. It's Probably it might be a little small, but we'll find out. Okay, yep. let's just make it a smidge higher than that. Like I said, 40 units. Okay, so the way that you do, you work with uh, any types of volumes is you use a brush. Now, for this ladder, you're only going to want to use the cube. I think you're going to have errors if you use the other ones. But you click where it says volumes. And then, if you choose from the list, there's a ladder volume. If you pull away, you'll see that there is a um, a volume, ladder volume that's been made, where the builder brush was. And if I pull up the properties, you can see there's some different options for everything. Uh, let's collapse all these. And look. The big one that you want to be aware of is wall direction. Um, yaw would basically be what you would use to rotate. The way that I set this up, the default is it's pointing um, in the right direction, but if for some reason you saw your character going to the wrong side, you can change it. So in order to get this to work, you need to do a build, because um, it's considered an AI path. So I would do build all. And you can see at that point, it creates two markers. It creates a top marker. Uh, auto ladder and the bottom marker and the volume. So you actually have three things. You have the marker at the top, marker at the bottom, and the volume. And those three work together in order to make the ladder work. So let's test it out. You don't even, uh, once it's built, you can play it. Uh, generally, with the volumes, it doesn't even close the path. You don't even need to necessarily do anything, even do a build. So you can see, okay, there we go. And we came out. Now if I go forward down the ladder, you can see it doesn't quite work. And this is the drawback with the ladder that they have designed. Uh, if I go backwards, as long as I'm lined up in the right place, it's okay. So this, I think that's one reason why you don't see it in a lot of Unreal games, because it's a little clunky and could use some tweaking. Now the other thing I did with this ladder, and you kind of notice we intersected this, we can tweak some. If you want to move these a little bit, it's okay. If you move them too much, you could get some errors. But I grouped I grouped all these elements together um, by selecting all of them and then grouping them. And then I basically set the collision to no collision so that you don't interact with any of those. So you want to be careful with that when you recreate a ladder. You don't want to get to the point that you can't get to the ladder because it's being blocked by the model of the ladder. So let's uh, move on to the pool now and see if we can start to get that set up. So we're going to add the physics water to it first, or the basic volume. So we're going to resize, get the width, and I'm going to make it just slightly bigger, and then slightly bigger in this direction. And the big one is just getting the height and where you position the top of the water. Right now you'd be in water the entire time, the way this is set up. Let's go on and bring this and make this a little shorter. And then bring it down. And I'll probably do a little bit more. Just a smidge. And move this down. 
and we're good to go. Like I said, because it's a volume, choose it, go down UT water volume. So it's an Unreal uh, class, which means that you have to have a uh, game type that it recognizes like a DM. Okay, so let's uh, play. Now let's see what we have. Okay, I don't see anything. You see how the instant, all of a sudden now I'm actually swimming. You don't hear anything at this point. You can hear me get out. If I go over here, I do a jump. Me. And then the ladder acts a little weird, but we'll see if we can actually get out using the ladder. Sometimes it works. So if not, you can just jump. Okay, so that's not going to be very helpful because we don't see anything. So let's add a element to it. I'm going to go in and actor class. I'm going to open up fluid, and there's a fluid surface actor. Uh, it's easier to show you than kind of explain this. So we're going to add the, the surface, the fluid surface actor. And you can see it's already placed in the scene, and I want to make sure that it's exactly the same height as the water. So I'll bring it up the same height as the brush. You can see it's actually oversized. I'd probably shrink it down because it's a physics-based object and it gets evaluated, so I'd make it as small as possible so you're not waking, wasting processor speed trying to get it to work. Um, I'm going to build it just to make sure everything's set up with it. And it works okay. And now if I do play, if I go, it automatically creates little shimmers and ripples. But it's not very helpful the way that it looks right now because it has a checker. So we'll select that, open it up, and you'll see there's an option for fluid material. And right now it's just defaulting to none. So we'll go open our content browser, and I'll isolate my selections to materials, and I'll add uh, water, and here you'll see is the fluid actor water. Now the image isn't fully loaded, sometimes this happens, you can see the slash means it's not necessarily fully loaded in the memory, but when we go to load it, it will load up and it'll be available because you see now it's gone in the previews there. And all it is is it's a reflection of the sky, so there's a sky image, and then high specularity, and then an animated ripple. Those are the elements that are used to create it. And the way that I loaded it is I highlighted it, found fluid material, and then clicked this icon right here, which basically uploads whatever object you have highlighted in the content browser. So let's uh, do a build all again, just to make sure everything's okay, and go play from here. There we go. And it looks kind of nice, and you can obviously tweak it and change. But when I go underwater, there's nothing here. So we'll create a plane. Uh, we could do um, just take this plane and rotate it, but I usually just, uh, it's just more calculation issues. I try to keep things simple. So we'll do static mesh, pull in a plane, uh, plane, and then there's some different ones uh, depending on whether or not they have collision geometry. I'm just going to grab this plane and bring it in. And let's take a look at it. Okay, so so where is it? That's always the first thing to start with. Um, it's there. And can we see it? And one reason why we can't necessarily see it is because of the way that it's set up and it's positioned. So let's get this moved and we'll do it in the other views. And we will rotate it. And... Okay, and then we shall uh, move it down, and then we're going to go and we're going to scale it. Let me get in the middle in the beginning. So usually I recommend not using planes, but this is kind of a special instance. I wouldn't use a CSG plane to build any geometry because the physics engines absolutely hate it. This we don't want to get any physics calculations being done to it at all. So we can just kind of put it in and let's go down and see if it's actually there. Okay, you can see that it's there. So we'll do a build all. We'll get it and the thing that happens you see how it's dark underneath. 
That's because the, the plan that we just added is blocking the light and it's casting a shadow. So if I hit F4 and open up and go to uh, static octor component and then go to lighting, you can see by default it's casting shadows. Turn that off. Dynamic N, static shadows. And now if we do a build all, we get the light and we're good to go with that. Now at this point we want to change the material of this item and this is kind of a hack but we can do it for the time being. You open up uh, rendering and you can add a material to override the default material. If you have more than one plane in the scene this could be an issue but this is just what we're going to do uh, just to make it easier. And we're going to open up the content browser, we're going to go back to materials, pull back up the water that we had before, fluid water actor, so we got the same one below and above and load that up and now if we do a build all again you know you can see it already and play from here now we have the water surface underneath and then when we go up we have oh, now you can see we're running into a problem we're stuck underneath and the interesting thing is if I try to do that from up here maybe a place from here and all of a sudden I'm walking on water so what I need to do is I need to disable the collision that is on this plane. Now I'm having a little bit of a time selecting it, so I'll do the open up the scene. And we shall find it, and I think it's 10 rendering material. Yeah, that looks like it. And if we wanted to, you can see there's different tags. Um, if I want to change this tag, I can change it to water. Actually, i got to go down and do it in the object. Um, Tag 10. You can go down to tags down here and you could change it to water plane if you wanted to. But if we go down to collision, you'll see it says collide block all. So if we do no collision and we go to play from here, we go to walk and go up. Come out of the water, so I'm not walking in the water anymore. So we've got to prevent it from blocking physical movement plus the light. Now at this point, underwater looks a little weird because there's no blurring, no distortion. And that's why I left the brush exactly where it is because the next thing I want to do is go and add a new volume. And this new volume is going to be called a post-process volume. You're not going to see any changes until you activate it. Okay, here's our post-process volume. Let's open it up. Let's go down to desaturate just to kind of show you what happens. You can see the instant I do desaturate, it can make the whole thing black and white because um, it's taking all the color out of it. If I do something like 0.5, you can see it's making it a little dingy, so it's not as bright. Um, but that's a quick way to show you some of the things you can do. If I do depth of field, that creates a blur, and you can see it's kind of doing a blur, but it's a little weird. And the reason is, is it's only blurring stuff that has to be pretty far away. So if I change that to zero, now everything I see is blurry, which kind of gives you kind of what would happen inside the pool. And then the other thing we can do is if we wanted to, here's some highlights and you can change different colors. You can see there's a colorize option as well. And if I change this to 0.5, I can get kind of a blue tint that takes place in my water. And that's this takes place during game time, so I don't have to build it at all. It just kind of happens. So that's another nice thing about the, the process, the, the volumes, is you don't necessarily have to rebuild them every single time to tweak it. Also you can do some editing inside it if you do um, edit and then you can see object and class and if you pull up the proper class you can actually get um, some changes real time inside the, the scene.